Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of June 14th, 2021. This week I get four topics. The first one is the long awaited Sony Air Peak is finally, well, somewhat released. We have more information, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the EV tall company called Kitty Hawk, not the Kitty Hawk that is now called uh, a loft, but Kitty Hawk purchase 3DR. We'll talk about what happened there. We'll talk about a pilot that was attacked for flying his drone, and this is uh, this is something that we need to take seriously because uh, well because it has some consequences. And the last one, we'll talk about the software called SkyBrowse that is now available for hotel, and it has some really cool capabilities. So let's get to it. <music> And the first thing this week is Sony is finally releasing their Air Peak. Now we've had a lot of peaks into the Air Peak for a while now, uh, with not a whole lot of information other than uh, thing can fly into the wind. That was kind of their last video uh, we talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, now we have a full list of specs, and and I hate to say it because I haven't flown the drone just yet, but I am uh, underwhelmed, unfortunately, for several reasons. I, I, I hope that some changes will be made to the drone, and I hope that I get to get my hands on it, but at the moment, um, I, I, I can't say that I'm extremely overwhelmed with what they propose, but but let's get to it. Let's take that out of the picture. Uh, let's give them a chance. Uh, the first one is the maximum speed of 55 miles an hour, which is fairly impressive. The one thing that I was not impressed with, and, and a lot of other people as well, is the 12 minute flight time when you have a, uh, a full load on the camera. They advertise 22 minutes without any load and then 12 minutes with a load, a camera and a gimbal underneath it. Uh, obviously, if you have a drone like this, you're not flying it around without a load. So 22 minutes is completely irrelevant. The 12 minute is what is important. Um, stable into the wind up to 44 miles an hour. That's definitely a big plus. Retractable landing gear, very similar to what you see on a uh, on a, on the Inspire 2 or on the Matrice type of drone. Only compatible with Apple devices. Now you're going to say, doesn't this carry a camera? Yes, it does. We're talking about the software on the uh, that's going to control the drone. Only compatible with Apple devices. So that's kind of a, a big negative right here. The last negative is the price tag at nine thousand dollars. Nine thousand dollars plus whatever you're going to put on top of it uh, with the gimbal and the camera. Uh, you've got a thousand dollar minute drone. Actually, probably more expensive than that. So um, again. I think something is missing there. I, I can't wait to see more information about this. Again, I want to give it a chance, but uh, for right now, a little bit disappointed, I'm not going to lie, uh, on this release. The next thing this week is the EV tall company called Kitty Hawk. Now, not the, like I said in the intro, the Aloft, which used to be Kitty Hawk. This is Kitty Hawk in two words, actually. Uh, they are purchasing uh, 3D robotics. And uh, if you're familiar with 3D robotics, they, they focus on automated flights and enterprise software. Now they've been purchased by Kitty Hawk. And uh, Chris Anderson, who was the CEO of 3D Robotics, is now going to be Kitty Hawk's chief operating officer. So I'll put a link down here to uh, to the article if you want to read more about this. Uh, it'll be interesting. The, the 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 space for air taxi for AAM Advanced Air Mobility is uh, growing very quickly, and uh, and it's interesting to see kind of the 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 merging and 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 all the technology that's coming out of this. So we'll talk about this some more when more information comes out. Something not as much fun. Uh, this is something that was reported on a forum on Facebook from a source that I trust. And uh, this person was attacked while flying their drone. And uh, the person that attacked them smashed the, the phone and the transmitter, causing the drone to basically hover and then eventually kicked into a return to home, RTH. And then the aircraft on the, in the process uh, crashed into a tree. The disturbing part about this, other than the fact that this person was assaulted for flying their drone, the, the disturbing part is that the police that uh, was on site instructed the person to uh, take it with the FAA for the destruction of the aircraft. Now, um, obviously, assault, battery, I'm not a judge or a lawyer, but uh, there's a lot more into this issue right here than just the destruction of an aircraft. This person was attacked while flying their drone. Uh, this is a discussion that has been going on for a while in the industry. And at the moment, the FAA per se does not have any regulation that protects pilots against this kind of attacks. Now, there are other regulation uh, for destruction of an aircraft, which is not governed by the Code of Federal Regulation, which is what the FAA is in charge of. So there's going to be more from other agencies on this, but 
when Remote ID came out, a lot of us were vocal, including myself, about the fact that providing the location of the pilot to the general public is a terrible idea because things like this can actually happen. Now, this is even worse because Remote ID is not even in place yet. And, uh, and now we have people getting attacked Arras, whatever it is, uh, with for just flying their drones. So uh, the FAA has promised, and, and I don't know if promise is the word, but has mentioned that they are working on language that is going to help protect uh, unmanned aircraft pilots and crew, uh, just like they protect the crew inside of an aircraft. Try to go in a Delta flight and try to knock the door open, which is actually something that we talk about in the, the airplane news update. But try to do this and see what happens and see if you're actually going to get in trouble. Try to punch the pilot of a Delta flight and see what happens. Well, uh, drone pilots need to be protected in the same manner. They're flying an aircraft. If the FAA says that an aircraft is an aircraft, a U.S. is an aircraft, then we need to be protected as well. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of my shout out. We're going to get more information on this. The person at the moment is um, is a little bit reluctant to talk about more of this until the investigation is a little further. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe we can even get this person on the, 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 the show to talk about what happened and to talk about where the investigation is actually going. So uh, keep this in mind. I mean, this is, I know all of you that watch this video every week, you all fly for a living be aware of your environment. And I'm not saying that this person wasn't, obviously we're not blaming the victim here, but be aware of your environment, be aware of what is going on around you and have a plan of, uh, of, atta of attack. I don't know if this is the right word, but uh, a plan of attack in case something happens like this, where you can retreat, go somewhere or defend yourself. So uh, not easy when you have to fly the drone, obviously. And um, again, a, a terrible story that I, I hate to report on. The last thing this week is this uh, software called SkyBrows. Now, this software is actually really cool uh, because I've seen it firsthand when we were in Texas a couple weeks ago. And, um, and SkyBrows is this software that does mapping in a very short amount of time. And, and not only that, but it does it at a, at a level that is extremely precise, for especially for the amount of time that you spend in the air. Um, you can create 3D images in a 90, using a 90-second video and the software collects all this data and creates this 3D model. And the, the purpose of this obviously is for when you need to do a model of an area in a very quick fashion. Let's say that you get to a site and you responded to a tornado that just hit an area and you need to capture data for this whole area in a minute and a half, like we mentioned bring back the information, create the mapping, and now the entire team can take a look at, instead of looking at um, an old GPS map, then now you can actually look at fresh data that was just captured from the drone, and now you have this 3D map available. So anyway, this is what SkyBras does, and then now they have the ability to create thermal mapping using hotel drones. So this only works at the moment with the EVO2 Dual and the EVO2 640T, uh, and uh, it has the ability to basically create a thermal image of a location, creating a 3D model of that. And uh, this is perfect, for example, for nighttime accident reconstruction, for example, or really anything that happens at night where you need to have the, we need to turn on this uh, camera, a uh, thermal camera to capture data. So. I'm going to leave a link down in here, skybras.com. They spell sky a little bit weird with an E in the middle. Uh, but you can go and take a look. You can download the software. If you have one of these platforms, you can actually uh, uh, use it and, and take a look and, and see what it does. But uh, I just thought it was kind of amazing and, and worthy of, of talking about it in here. If you haven't listened to the podcast this week, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you go and listen. We were a little bit late posting it. Uh, we usually post on Tuesday, but this week we posted on Thursday, so yesterday. And we talked to Randall Warnes, who's the new CEO of Hotel, and it was an amazing discussion. Uh, I don't want to say much more, but uh, Randall was very open about what he plans to do with the company, uh, very open with uh, his views on a lot of different topics. And we threw a lot of questions at him, and he answered all of them in detail. Uh, if you're a DJI pilot, go listen to the to the podcast. If you're a hotel pilot and maybe you had some concerns about where the company was going uh, with the, the chip changes, there's a lot of information in there where Randall talks about all of this. I think this will make you feel a lot better. Uh, it personally made me feel better. I, I'm really glad that we get a chance to talk to him and, uh, and kind of pick his brain. So uh, that's all I'm going to say. It's on the Pixel Drone Show uh, podcast page. Make sure that you go take a look at this. It's about it's a little over an hour, but I think uh, probably a really good hour that you can spend listening to uh, what is going on in this industry. So uh, that's all I have. If you like airplanes, we have the airplane news update as well. Uh, we talk about a flight attendant 
independent that's trying to uh, break open into a cockpit door. Uh, we talk about a, an old airplane mystery from 1965 that may have actually been solved using an underwater drone. We'll talk about a laser incident with the California Highway Patrol, and then we'll talk about Southwest Airlines that uh, requested a ground stop for all of their aircraft. So you can find all of that into our airplane channel, which is the uh, third channel that we have. We have a lot of channels on YouTube, and uh, all the information is in there. But that's it. Like, subscribe, comment, do everything that you do, and I'll talk to you guys next week.